All right, so welcome everyone. I hope you are enjoying this 30 days sock challenge. Today we are going to start our incident response basic. This is day 11 and um, I hope you are enjoying the Discord server as well. Uh, talking to different people, uh, resolving your query, submitting your responses. Uh, make sure, uh, I mean, I have shared the link to join this challenge. Uh, I mean, I shared that in the description below. If you have missed that, so you can quickly register yourself. Make sure you confirm your registration and then check your promotion tab under the Gmail. And, um, you know, make sure you drag it to your primary mail so that you never miss any email. Without taking much time, let's get started. Now, this is our day 11, which is introduction to incident response. Remember, in, this is this is going to be very interesting lab because this is this is very very practical on Windows Server. Brute force attack will be launching an attack. We'll be simulating it. Remember, this is only for learning purpose. So we are going to simulate an attack from Kali Linux, and then we are going to visualize that on Windows Server, and then we are going to uh, you know perform incident response by creating the routes as well, so that we can avoid. The, uh, you know stop the attacker from sending more brute force attack for them okay so what is incident response first of all it's a very structured and well-defined approach to handle or manage the aftermath of uh, security breach or any cyber attacks so uh, it, it the purpose the goal is to make sure um, to bring back the services in a normal situation as soon as possible start with the detect the incident so your job is first to make sure you detect the attack then contain the damage you have to contain it you have to uh, restrict the overall damage so that your rest of the network shouldn't get impacted then investigate the root cause recover the normal operation and report and document all the findings okay there are majorly two frameworks which is used nest special publication and sans as well both are more, more or less same, but let's follow the NEST uh, framework for incident response. Start with preparation, that's the first phase, where we make sure we establish the policy, train our employees, set up all the required tools and process and mechanism. Then we have detection and analysis, where we identify uh, all the anomalous traffic, logs, alert, and everything possible and then we once we detect this then we perform the analysis uh, it's it may be a kind of uh, initial primary diagnosis to understand is it a false positive or it's, it is a genuine one if it is a genuine one i can assign it to this SOC level 2 team to investigate it further right so then their job as an incident response analyst would be to make sure they contain the the attack maybe isolate the threat let's say the single machine got impacted right maybe with ransomware or uh, maybe any phishing url or something my job would be to make sure i actually isolate that machine from the network so that that malware won't spread to the rest of the network then eradication i have to make sure i remove the malware for them from the machine maybe i just remove the file but most of the time it is recommended to actually format the machine altogether and then finally we'll have to recover the machine right once the machine is clean once we have monitored it for a couple of days then we can take it back to the network and then we make sure we create the incident response report as well and share across with the different stakeholder in the team outside of the team legal team management team and everyone there are different types of incidents um, occur in, in, when it comes to the Windows system, Linux machine as well. Uh, so you can see this is these are some of the common incidents. Remember, this is also very important from the job perspective as well. You actually get the real idea of what kind of incident you come across for Windows. Unauthorized login attempt, PowerShell based attack, PowerShell abuse attack. PowerShell suspicious, suspicious activity on multiple endpoints, Linux related attack like SSH brute force attack, AWS related attacks like uh, or maybe alerts or incident like AM credential abuse, abuse uh, you know, root cause, console access, email, phishing, credential uh, harvesting and uh, 
so yeah there there are many more you can go through it and i also mentioned their description as well to get a clear understanding okay i won't go through each one of them individually i recommend you to go through it and learn about it and uh, the way SOC analysis basically most of the time it is the SOC analysis level two or incident response responder job is to perform the incident response okay so they, they basically monitor the logs and alert on the sim tool mostly mostly on the edr itself so most of the time SOC analysis depend on the edr tool because that's quite faster it's quite faster to respond on to the edr tool as well then they investigate the behavior, then they contain and isolate the affected machine and coordinate with the other team and then document the report and document the entire incident. I hope this was clear for you. What is incident response? Um, if you want in detail, I can cover the entire structure step by step in an altogether a different video, but this is a quick wrap. Next, let's start with the task. In the same day 11 itself, after the theory, I also have a lab. So I won't leave you that early for sure. So make sure you have a Windows server. And for this lab, make sure you have a virtual box ready. Both the machine, you can keep it into the NAT device, NAT network. You have to have a Windows server, maybe 2019 or 2012. RDP is by default enabled, so you don't have to do anything. But if not, then make sure it's enabled. Have Kali Linux and under the Kali Linux, install Hydra. I mean, if it's by default, it is enabled as far as I remember. If it's not, ABT install Hydra. Okay. Uh, this is the option to enable the RDP. I mentioned that in the, in the preparation step. Uh, you can also add a test user like this. So that user, I can use it to. Uh, I mean, the idea is we are going to run a brute force RDP based attack on our Windows server from our Kali Linux attacker machine, right? So you can use a sample test user, create a test user on the Windows server, and then I can take that test user and launch the attack from my Kali Linux using multiple different passwords. Okay. Uh, I'll be using the administrator. I'll leave up to you to use the create a test user with your own name and then launch the attack and then share with the report in the discord server okay let's simulate the attack uh, this is my okay uh, let me show you okay this is my kali linux okay and uh, if you can see if you don't have hydra you won't see anything but i can see all the options i guess seems to be slow for some reason yeah okay hydra is running at this moment uh, if it's not then you can run these apt install hydra or with sudo user sudo you can run the sudo apt install hydra and um, you make sure you also have your windows server ready as well right like this make sure they can talk to each other directly and um, all the logs related to the brute force or login, logout, and all those stuff, you can check that in the event viewer. Go to search icon, type event viewer, then open Windows logs, then go to security. This is where you have to look at 4625, which is logon success or failure related logs. Okay. Now let's launch the attack. The command is very simple Hydra minus. L, I mean, there are the multiple options uh, with the time, different variation, verbose option. I'll make it simple. I'll use minus L, then the username, which is administrator. Okay. And then I'll use the password, which is, I think, password dot, password list dot txt. Okay. So that's locally stored. You can create your own password file by nano. So you can just go ahead and create a password file by nano password txt and add any random password and save in the local directory itself okay uh, local location itself and i'm in the root so make sure you save there itself okay then let's define the protocol rdp slash uh, slash slash and then the server ip address in my case you can see it's 6520 6520 79 Seventy nine one double six, right? 
So once I hit enter, I should see, I mean, I should see all the attempts, right? Perfect. You can see it's it got started. All right, so the attack is complete. If you come to the event viewer and check the first event itself, uh, of course, uh, in the with the event ID 4625, you can go to the details section and in here you can find the, yes, you can find the source IP address as well, which should match with our attacker's IP address. Perfect, 69, 62, 84, 69. Yes, so the attack attempt was done and it was failure. You can see the failure reason as well. Everything is mentioned here. So the attack has been detected on the Windows logs in the security section with the event ID 4625. So we are good till here, right? Now, next step is to perform the incident response. You remember the first thing is we'll have to contain the machine. So we'll have to make sure the attack has been contained. We have to make sure this has been isolated. So you can possibly, because this is not a soft sort of a, a malware that is that, that got installed in the machine. So containment is not specifically required. What majorly required at this moment is to stop this attack coming in from the Kali Linux. Okay. So as a part of first action, okay, as a part of first action, maybe, I mean, see, I mean, you never know. I mean, if it is a server, the malware can be installed by some means. So uh, there are some other techniques which could be done, but because uh, it's it's not a computer, so it's not a malware installed in the machine. So my job would be to first stop this kind of attack, right? So for this, the best solution is to create a firewall rule, okay? So what I am, uh, even I have mentioned that uh, into the, in, in this here as well, you can see that. So as a part of incident, uh, I can create a firewall rule to block this traffic. So what I can do is I can go to the firewall. I mean, of course, you can also and you can go to the Windows Defender. I'll show you. Fire. You can just search firewall. Go to Windows Defender. Then click on Advanced Setting, and then you will come to the firewall. Windows Firewall with Advanced Security on Local Computer. Okay. I want to create an inbound rule now. Okay. Uh, to create the inbound rule, click on the New Rule go to the custom rules click next then go next uh, protocol number let's uh, protocol type sorry let's keep it tcp because rdp is tcp based protocol and then local port would be 3389 so a specific port will be 3389 and remote port can be any because we are not sure uh, because from the client from the attacker side the attacker might be using a random port right it would be random port, of course, and our upon our side, it would be a standard port, which is three three eight nine, which is which belongs to RDP, right? Then uh, any IP address on local IP address because that's just one IP address. And the remote IP address, I know about it, so I'll add a IP address in here. I know the attacker IP address, which is sixty nine dot sixty two dot eighty four dot sixty nine, right? Let's add it. Perfect. Let's go next. Allow this connection or block this connection. I want to block this connection. Let's go next. I will apply this to domain, to private network, to public network everywhere. Perfect. And let's give a name like uh, Kali uh, uh, block RDP. Okay. Let's save this file. And you can see when you go to the inbound, you can see your rule here, right? Now, when you try to see, let's try with doing the nmap first, okay? Because I have blocked the RDP session. So attacker shouldn't even be able to scan my port, right? So let's run the nmap. nmap, you can see minus P3389 and the uh, server port, which is 6520-79166. Can you see? It's filter. Otherwise, it should be open, right? Currently, it is filter. Now, if I try to run the attack, same attack, right? I shouldn't 
it's, I cannot see the same log, right? Because the firewall port itself blocks. So RDP service will not be entertained, right, to the attacker. But we can also validate with the logs on the firewall logs. To do that, what you can do is you can click on the Windows firewall and go to the properties. And in here, you have logging option. So make sure you enable the logging. Uh, this is the path where the logs are usually usually stored. So you can copy this, come to the folder and save it here. You can see the different files, but we'll open that later. Let's first enable logging on all the profile, private as well, logging. Enable this. Uh, make sure enable here. Log drop packet. So click yes and click OK. Go to public profile. Go to customize. Log drop packet should be yes and save. Apply. Okay. Now let's launch the same attack from Kali Linux. Perfect. And let's come back to our Windows machine and open the firewall logs. Okay. So you remember I just I copied the firewall log file. Can you see this? This is the log file. You see this? That's wonderful. You see this? 1029, 1029 is the correct time. This is the attacker's IP address. You see, uh, I mean the Kali Linux IP address, which was uh, yeah. 69, 69, 62, 84, 69. Perfect. You see this? And port 3389, it's getting dropped. And we are successfully being able to stop and mitigate the attack. Now you can document this entire process, entire activity that happened and share across with everyone. I hope this was useful for you. We'll catch you in the next challenge. Till then, keep learning.